Nobody would consider plugging in a hairdryer and then stepping into water, but that's essentially what we're doing when we bring electricity aboard a sailboat. If you could install one single device on your sailboat that would make your boat shockproof for swimmers, prevent galvanic corrosion, and also eliminate the risk of connecting the shore power with the wrong polarity, would you want one? That device would be an isolation transformer, and we're going to talk about that today as we talk about shore power connections and the electrical system on sailboats. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. We've been cruising and living aboard for 33 years, documenting the sailing lifestyle. Join us for the building of our fifth boat, a custom aluminum Orion 49. Most modern boats have a 12-volt DC electrical system with batteries that allow us to start the main engine and provide us with the power to run most of the pumps, lights, instruments, and all the other 12-volt devices we want aboard. Many boats also have an AC power system for AC devices, like a microwave oven and home-style AC outlets for things we bring aboard from home, such as tools or kitchen appliances and phone chargers. Some have a generator to allow us to run AC appliances while underway. Similarly, most boats have an AC shore power connection, so we can plug in when connected to the dock and have a battery charger to keep the batteries charged, and also to run AC devices directly from the shore power when we're moored up. It's the shore power system that we are going to talk about today, because there are a few problems that crop up when we connect that shore power cord to the boat's electrical system. Here's how shore power should work in a properly functioning marine electrical system. There are three wires, the live or hot wire, neutral or return, and the ground wire. When we use power aboard, AC alternating current flows in the hot wire and back through the neutral wire. Current always wants to flow back to the source, in this case the shore pedestal. Nothing at all should flow along the ground wire, it's there just for safety in case something goes wrong. However, if there is a leak from this intended path, some current could leak to the ground. In this case, the brown wire shorting out to the metal case of the inverter, which is grounded, a condition called a ground fault. This brings up another factor. The boat's onboard DC electrical system and bonding system also need to be grounded to the seawater through connection to the engine, prop shaft and propeller, as well as being connected to the ground for the AC system. The bonding system requires a ground to protect underwater metals from corrosion and is likely connected up to a lightning protection system to direct lightning current down to the water as a ground as well. This means that there are two routes to ground for any stray electrical current when using shore power, the power cord to shore and the ground to seawater. For example, there might be a loose connection in the ground wire, such that the ground no longer connects ashore. This is called a faulty ground. The combination of a ground fault and a faulty ground can result in metal parts in the boat and underwater becoming energized. In addition to the hazard to people on board, there is also a danger to swimmers near the boat, who could receive a lethal dose of electricity and drown due to involuntary loss of muscle control. This tragic situation is known as electric shock drowning. In the past, a boat's AC breakers only protected wiring and cables from over amperage problems. But recent regulatory changes now recommend electrical leakage protection be installed. The ELCI compares current flowing in the hot and neutral wires and cuts off the power if the leakage is more than a small threshold. These devices are installed near the input plug as well as in marinas, but if your boat is more than 10 years old, it may well not have this protection. You can check that you have shore power protection by following the cable from the fitting where it enters the boat through to the shore power breaker, usually recognizable with a breaker panel, perhaps like this. Your boat may also have a large isolation transformer like this, or a galvanic isolator, likely to be much smaller and looking like this. Since we're building a new boat, we have the opportunity to tailor the system to our needs, as well as having the latest and safest in up-to-date shore power. We have a number of discussions with the Enkhausen brothers, builders of the new boat, at their offices in Mackham in the Netherlands. And if you're interested in seeing our new Enksail Orion 49 sailboat in build, come to the Open Boat event September 2nd, 2023, 
from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Gebroder van Enkhuizen shipyard in the Netherlands. Registration is required. Paul and I will be there to show you around and we'll be giving presentations throughout the day about the build and the hybrid electric system we're installing on Distant Shores 4. More details in the description below. So each boat in a marina will have their own ground for their systems, as well as the dock shore power system which has its own ground. It's important to isolate these grounds, otherwise they will allow galvanic corrosion through stray DC currents. Zincs will corrode too fast, and underwater metals can be damaged including propellers, shafts, fittings, outdrives, etc. There are two options to fix this. A galvanic isolator can be inserted in the ground wire. It stops DC current flowing, but allows the AC fault current to flow in the event of a ground fault. This is the cheapest option. The other option is to install an isolation transformer. This essentially disconnects the boat electrically from the shore power altogether. It works through the magic of magnetism. Power flows in through the live wire, through a magnetic coil, and back ashore through the neutral wire. Magnetism induces an equivalent AC current in a second coil, and this essentially becomes the power source to the boat, not the pedestal on shore. The ground wire will also connect here, and since power always returns to its source, any ground fault on board will not result in a situation with power escaping into the water trying to get back to the pedestal. So we simultaneously stop stray electrical currents from causing galvanic corrosion and keep swimmers safe. Many years ago, I received a very strong shock when I was climbing off our boat and onto the dock. Nowadays, the modern standard is that shore pedestals should have an ELCI type safety device to prevent this. The shore power input connector connects to a 32 amp circuit breaker with built-in ELCI and then an isolation transformer, which isolates the boat's AC system from the dock. Now the electrical power starts right here on board and flows back to the source, which is now the isolation transformer. There is no more risk to swimmers, since any stray power in the ground system will not flow ashore through the water, since the power source is on board. So, to summarize, water and electricity can be a dangerous mix on a boat, but needn't be, with proper safety systems installed that are checked regularly to ensure that no power is going astray. These safety systems include a galvanic isolator, or better yet, an isolation transformer along with an ELCI, also called an RCD in Europe. It is also important to check that there are no loose cable connections or corrosion in the wiring. If you love the sailing lifestyle and enjoy fun on, as well as in the water like we do, why not take a look at the state of your electrical system the next time you're at your boat to ensure the safety of those on board and to prevent galvanic corrosion on equipment you rely on at sea. And if you're looking for a special gift for the sailor in your life, check out our upcoming Sail Away Weeks. Join us for a 12-day voyage of a lifetime through the Greek islands, September 9th to 21st, 2023. No sailing experience necessary. Details below. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this video informative. Have questions? Throw in a comment below. We value your feedback. See you next time.